What is up guys, Zach here from the Chaos Galaxy and today I'm going to be going through part 2 of the Chaos Galaxy TCG official rulebook. If you haven't seen part 1, the rulebook is in a set order, so you should probably watch that first and then come back to this, there'll be a link in the description below. But we're going to get straight into it. We finished the last episode with activator cards, so we're going to be starting the next chapter, chapter 8 of 12, which is going to be combiner creatures. Um, I probably should have done this in the last video because after this I've gone through every single type of card in the game. So here we go. Basically combiner creatures are just like creature cards except they're made of two separate cards and you don't pay stars to play combiner creatures. Instead you have to draw both corresponding combiner cards to be able to play the combiner creature. So once you play the two cards together they become one combiner creature however they take up two zones instead of one. We've just got all the parts of a combiner creature here. So we have the card names at the top We've then got the power and health ratings. Then instead of having stars like a normal creature, you have the combiner counterpart, which is the other card you need to play the card. You can't just use any random mashup of two combiner cards. Uh, you have to have the correct one. So as you can see here, uh, Tentaclon, oops, Tentaclon Tentacles is the name of this card. And the corresponding card that goes with it is Tentaclon Head. And then here is Tentaclon Head. And as you can see, it only goes with Tentaclon Tentacles. Uh, they then have a power and health ratings. Their power and health is normally higher than standard creatures because obviously they take two cards so they're going to be bigger and harder to play. We then have the card's artwork. The card's artwork should like line up together to make one bigger image which is pretty cool. Um, and then at the bottom we have all the other information like the card number, the card rarity and then it says combiner down here. Okay, so to play a combiner creature you simply have to have both cards. You play them at the same time in creature zones next to each other and this is classed as a free play. So once you play them, um, they count as two separate cards whilst they're in your hand, galaxy, or if they're killed. It's only when you play them to your planet that they become one single creature and are classed as one card. So anywhere else, so anywhere else apart from on your planet, they are two separate cards. And the power and health of a combiner creature is the power and health that you read on the cards. It's not the added together power and health. So when you play Tentaclon, Tentacles and Tentaclon Head, uh, it, it goes together to become just Tentaclon, and then Tentaclon has a power of 370 and 290. It's not 370 add 370, because that would just be a bit too powerful, I think. And then here we just have a little example of how to play a combiner creature. So you just play the two cards at the same time from your hand into two creature zones next to each other, and then they occupy both of those creature zones. Combiner creatures also occupy two battle zones, however, We'll go through those in the next chapter. So, battle zones. As you can see here in this little game example, we've played some creature zones, played some resource zones, and then played cards into those zones. However, even though you have creatures, you can't still attack your opponent's cards. You can't do any battles. So to do this, you must add a battle zone to your planet. They're played in the exact same way you add creature and resource zones to your planet. If you don't know how to do that, I go through it in the first video. So the first one, as you should know, costs two stars, then your second battle zone will cost four, the third one will cost eight, and so on. Um, so let's say you pay your two stars to add the first battle zone to your planet. You can now do battle. The amount of battles and attacks you can make in one turn depends on the amount of battle zones you have. So in this example here, as you can see, we have two creatures on our planet, a Drangel and a Bogabooga. However, because we only have one battle zone, only one of those creatures can battle this turn. Even if you've got like four or five creatures on your planet, if you only have one battle zone, you're only going to be able to battle once per turn. So buying battle zones is important. You probably you can't really win a game if you don't have any. So in order to battle, after you've played all the cards you want to play in a turn, you go ahead and say, okay, I've done everything I want to do this turn. Now all there's left to do is battle. You move a creature from a creature zone into its battle zone, so for example, and you'd move it up into a battle zone ready to attack. And once you've moved a creature into a battle zone, there's no going back, there's nothing you can do now, so you can't go ahead and play any more resource cards, play any creatures or buy any zones. Once you've moved, once you've moved a creature into a battle zone, the only thing you can do for the rest of that turn is battle. Also, if you have, if you want to move multiple creatures into multiple battle zones, you have to do this at once as well. So let's just pretend that there's another battle zone on our planet here. If you, you couldn't say, right, I'm going to move this Drangel into a battle zone, I'll battle with this, now I'll move it back and move the Bogabooga into a battle zone, so that can battle too. 
No, you have to do it all together. So you'd have to move Bogabuga and Drangel into battle zones at the same time. So just before so just before you move your creatures into battle zones, just think twice if there's anything else you need to do in your turn, because that's very important. But once you have creatures in a battle zone, like this Drangel in the example here, you're ready to battle. So, chapter 10 is called Battling. And just some general rules. A creature can only attack if it's in a battle zone. And a creature can only attack once per turn. Uh, and that's set for every creature, although there are some cards that can change this. And then to attack an opponent's creature, you just have your creature in a battle zone and you say, right, I'm going to use my Drangel to attack your creature, which in this example is a jellyfish. And when you're attacking, when you're doing the battle with a creature in your battle zone, you use your creature's power, which in this case is 320, and you compare that to your opponent's creature's health. And if your creature's power is higher than your opponent's creature's health, then the opponent's creature is killed and it's removed from its creature zone and just set to the side where it's no longer used. However, if your creature's power is lower than your opponent's creature's health, so say this jellyfish with 210 power is attacking is attacking an opposing Drangel with 270 power, so your creature is weaker than your opponent's creature and the jellyfish will be killed instead of the Drangel. So it's so you always do power against health, it's never power against power or health against health. It's always your power when you're attacking on your health if you're defending against an opponent's attack. Also, if two creatures battle and they have the same power as health, so if, let's say drain let's say a card has been played which reduces Drangel's health to 210. If I attack that with a jellyfish, it would be 210 against 210, and both the cards would be killed. And that's that's pretty simple, I think, the battling. However, there is another way of battling. If your opponent has no creatures on their planet, and you do, and you want to battle, then you can attack your opponent's planet. It doesn't matter if they have permanent resource cards, uh, it's only creatures that defend your opponent's planet. And when you attack an opponent's planet, that's how you get points, and points how you win the game. So it's really important to do planet attacks. And that's why it's also important to have creatures on your planet to defend yourself from your opponent attacking your planet. Now different creatures will give you different amounts of points for attacking, but I'll get into that in the next chapter. But once you've attacked with all the creatures you can in battle zones, you then go ahead, move them back into their creature zones, and then you have to end your turn after that. Okay, so this is chapter 11, which is kind of the final chapter. Um, it basically tells you how to win the game and what happens when a game's over. So this is going through points, which you gain from attacking your opponent's planet. And the aim of a game of Chaos Galaxy is for you to reach 20 points. When, you, when a player reaches 20 points, that player wins and the game is over. So points are awarded for performing planet attacks, and then there are some card abilities too that give you points. Uh, but mainly you're going to be getting points from doing planet attack. When you attack your opponent's planet, you gain points equal to the creature's power divided by 100, and then you round it to the nearest 100 when awarding points. So Drangel here, as you can see, his power is 320. The nearest 100 to 320 is 300. So you'd round this power to 300, then divide it by 100, which gives you 3 points. So if you attack with a creature with 100, then you gain one point. If you attack with a creature that, say, has, say it's right in the middle, say you attack with a creature that has 250, 250 rounds up to 300, so you get three points. And that's why the sort of 50 mark is uh, determines how, can be like a really big difference as to whether a card's good or not. So a card with 140 is a lot worse, probably, than a card with 150 power, because 150 will get you two points for an attack, 140 will only get you one point for an attack. So that's quite important, I, th I think, when choosing cards to put in your galaxy. So, yeah, uh, I've just simplified it, so there's like a table here with all the cards in. Uh, obviously, this table goes up to 540 power. There aren't really any cards with more than 540 power, although in some freak occasion, you might end up getting a card with like 700 power, which just rounds up, and then this table kind of could follow on forever. But so... Uh, if your creature has zero power, then you get zero points for attack. Anything higher than zero, so between 10 and 140 power, or sorry, that should be 1 and 140 power. Uh, there aren't any cards. The lowest power on a card is 10, but say uh, a creature's power gets halved to 5, to five, then you'd still get one point for that attack. So 1 to 140 power is one point. 150 power to 240 power is two points. 250 power to 340 is three points. 
350 to 440 is 4 points, 500 and 450 to 540 is 5 points, and so on. Um, but I don't think you're going to be getting more than 5 points for one attack. And then there will be some strange occasions when both players reach 20 points at the same time, although this can only really happen through card abilities, it can't ha really happen through an attack. Um, but if that happens, the game is declared a draw and you'd have to replay the match to see who is the winner. And then there's a quick tip here at the end that says try not to focus on getting points at the start of the game. So if you waste some, so if you play some of your strongest creatures at the start of the game, you may get a few points, but probably in the long run, your opponent is going to get rid of those cards and then eventually overpower you. So uh, it's best to set up a good set of creatures and resources um, to take down your opponent gradually and then over time you'll get points with that strong setup and then it, it'll just be better for you in the long run. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick tip that I found through playing games of Chaos Galaxy. And that is pretty much how you play a game of Chaos Galaxy. Um, if there are any questions you have, then obviously message me down below. Um, there'll be links to time frames in this video as to when I mentioned different things. So if you just want a quick ruling, you can go to reference for that. Also on the Wikipedia page, I'll try and put... Uh, I'll try and put up the actual rule book so you can just have a read of it if you want. That'll just be this document I've got here. Um, but for now, we have another chapter, which is other information, which doesn't really matter for playing a game. It's just some things that might be quite nice to know for when you buy packs and if you're collecting the cards. So, um, first part is card rarities. It doesn't really matter how rare a card is. If a card is rarer than another, it won't make it a better card. It just means it's more difficult to get and it's you can show it off to your friends if you have a really rare card. So there's four rarities. There's common, rare, really rare, and ridiculously rare. And hopefully you'll be able to see the kind of difference in the card's appearance. So for common cards, so common cards just look like this, the standard card. Rares, however, if it's a rare creature, then its stars will be filled in the same colour as the creature's planet. So Shios rare cards have red stars. Barrow, Barrow rare cards have brown stars. And then Polysium have blue and so on. Uh, it also has the text at the bottom of the card in the colour of the creature's planet as well. Uh, really rares are a bit different. They have stars that are different colours and the text boxes are different colours too. And these colours aren't really set to anything. They're just sort of they're just sort of made to go with the creature's design. So as you can see, Humongous Satan and Rockman, he's mainly made up of like brown, grey and a bit of green. So I just think his card looks cool with a bit of green, grey and brown in his background. And then Crunch on here... Uh, and then Cranch on here, the ridiculously rare cards, these are very cool. They have this sort of stripy pattern on the background. They've got like rainbow coloured stars and then a text that is again based on the creature's artwork and the colours that go best with that. So that's card rarity. Also, if you want to know the rarity of a card, it's located at the central bottom point of the card. So as you can see in all the examples here, Jellyfish is common, Meltalon's rare, Humongous Ancient Rock one's really rare, and then Crunchon is ridiculously rare. And also, if you want to know the, uh, the sort of ratios of how difficult cards are to get, then just look at the back of a Chaos Galaxy pack, and all the information is there for you. Uh, I've not put that on this rule book because with different packs, the rarities of getting different cards varies, so there's no. So uh, I'm still playing around with that at the time I'm making this video. Also, there are common and rare cards in every pack, however, really rare cards and ridiculously rare cards only come in sort of one in every two packs or one in every four packs. So if you don't get a really rare or ridiculously rare, then uh, don't get upset because they are made to be difficult to get, hence the word rare in their name. But then if you get a ridiculously rare or really rare, make sure to keep hold of it because it will be because it will more than likely be a very good card which you'll want to use. Uh, the last thing as well is the card's number. So if we go back to Meltalon here again, he says, he's in the bottom right-hand corner, he says P1, 022, which stands for pack 1, card number 22. Uh, normally packs have 100 different cards in, so if you collect all 100, you can keep them in order, and then that's just a really cool collector's thing. Okay, so that's everything in the rule book. I've also made a quick glossary here, which I'll read through quickly, uh, of all the key terms and words you'll need to know if you want to play a game of Chaos Galaxy. So these are done in alphabetical order, and the first one we have is a card's ability. And it's the text box underneath a card's artwork, normally on a resource card, attachment card, or activator card. And it tells you what the card does once you play it. And there are some creature cards that also have abilities, but not all of them. We then have the activation time, which is the text box above an ability text box on an activator card. And it tells you when to play the card in the game. We then have activator cards, which are the purple cards. They're used similar to resource cards, but they can only be played at the correct activation time into a resource zone. 
And then after being played, the card's ability is used instantly and it's then killed. We've then got attachment cards, which are the red cards, which are attached to creatures and then share the zone with the attached creature. The attachment cards' abilities are permanent and they're killed when the attached creature leaves your planet. And then you can also attach attachment cards to the creatures on either player's planet. Again, I go through all these points in more detail on the chapter in which I first mentioned the, the key term, but uh, this is just going through them all in, ca in case you need to reference. So an attack is when a creature in a battle zone which belongs to the turn player battles an opponent's creature or performs a planet attack. And if you're the person who's attack if you're the player who's attacking, then your creature's power is compared to your opponent's creature's health, and the creature with the lowest rating of the two is killed. So that's what an attack is. Then got battle zones, which are the green coloured zones, which creatures enter when the turn player wants to attack. We've then got combiner cards, which are also just called combiners for short, and they're the green cards, which are played in creature zones with their corresponding combiner card. Uh, and combiner cards take up one zone each, and when they are played, they become a combiner creature. And when and when two are played together, they become a combiner creature, which is then classed as one card. Combiner creatures are when two combiner cards are played together into creature zones and they become one combiner creature. They're similar to creature cards but they don't have stars and they occupy two creature zones and two battle zones. Then have a cost play, which is when you pay stars equal to the stars on a creature card in order to play the card from your hand into an empty creature zone. Creature cards, creature cards are the blue cards which have a star rating and power and health rating. They're played into empty creature zones and used to attack your opponent's creatures and planet, which ultimately wins you the game. Then got creature zones, which are the blue zones, just like the blue creatures, uh, which creatures are cost played and free played into. And then one creature takes up one creature zone. We've then got the word draw, which is when you take the top card from your galaxy and add it to your hand. We then have the term free playing, which is when you play a creature onto your planet and you don't have to pay stars for a free play. However, free plays can only really be done by card abilities. Next up is your galaxy, which is the deck of 34 to 60 cards which you choose yourself, apart from planet cards. And then uh, these are all the cards you're allowed to use during a game. We then have your hand, which are the cards that are at your disposal to play. They're drawn directly from the top of your galaxy, or they can be added to your hand by card abilities. And then they're just the cards that you're allowed to play at a given time. Your home planet is a part on a creature card which is where the creature originates from and it's shown at the top of the card in between the power and health rating and it's used for card abilities and then obviously to go with your planet cards ability mainly. We've then got the health rating which is a score on a creature used for defending against opponents attacks, that's quite a simple one. We then have your killed cards which are the cards that you've already used or resources you've exhausted during a battle uh, previously during the battle and they're placed just in a pile next to your galaxy where you can look through them for reference or if you have any card abilities that use your killed cards. Your opponent is just the person you're playing against so if a card says do something to one of your opponent's cards then it has to be one of their cards. Your planet which is the area your planet which is just the area of the board or the battlefield where your cards have been played you can attack place zones and use card abilities on your planet it's where sort of everything happens. You then have your planet card, which sits at the back of your planet and, um, and is placed separate to your galaxy, and it should reflect the creatures that you use in your galaxy. So, uh, so you need to choose your planet card wisely, and planet cards have abilities which are in play for the whole game. Uh, they can't be removed or destroyed. Next up, the word play is when you place a card onto your planet. This is normally done from your hand, but cards can be played to other places by card abilities and this is just sort of a more broad term for free playing and cost playing and you also use the word play when talking about resource attachments and activator cards. Then got point and you gain points from attacking your opponent and it's how you win the game. When a player reaches 20 points they win. Then got power which is the rating which is the score rating on a creature card used for attacking your opponent's creatures. So I just like to remember it as you use power when it's your turn and then you use your health when it's your opponent's turn. We've then got a resource card, which are yellow cards which only have abilities, they don't have a power in health or stars. They're free to play and they're used in resource zones and then they're categorised into single use resource cards and permanent resource cards. So single use resource cards, after using the ability the resource card is killed. 
You then have permanent resource cards which are played from your hand and then they stay there on your planet and have an ability which lasts as long as they remain in that creature zone on your planet. Um, perm and then they have to either be killed or removed when the game ends. There's no other way of getting past them. We've then got resource zones which are the yellow coloured zones into which you play all your resource cards and your activated cards too. We've then got stars. Um, the actual, ob the actual physical stars, which are used as currency in the Chaos Galaxy, pretty much to cosplay creatures, add zones to your planet, use some abilities, and basically sort of do anything. And then at the start of each of your turns, you gain four stars. We've then got stars, uh, meaning the creature rating, which are located just above the card's artwork, and uh, and the amount of stars a creature has are the amount of stars you must pay to cosplay that creature from your hand. You can also see the stars on a creature at the bottom left hand corner of the card. We've then got the word TCG. Some of you might not know what that means, but it literally just stands for trading card game. We then have zones, which are used to play cards in, and zones are added to your planet by paying stars and are categorised into battle zones, creature zones, and resource zones. If you want to look on some more info on playing zones, then there's the planet then there's a big chapter on it earlier on in the in the first video. We then have empty zones, and an empty zone is a zone that does not contain a card. Occupied zones occupied zones are zones which do have cards in. Cards can only be played into empty zones apart from active apart from attachment cards, of course. Uh, and when a, when a card is played in a zone, the zone is no longer empty. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. I know these, these videos haven't been the most exciting. However, it's something I just really need to go through in order for people to know how to play the game now that it's available on the Game Crafter, of course. So, um, yeah, please just give us a like anyway. I have put quite a lot of time and effort into making this rulebook. Um, so now that it's finished, I can actually get ahead to making some more cards. Set 2 is finished, completely finished now, so I can work on some some, some more starter decks and uh, set 3 and cool things like that. So, yeah, the next video as well will be will be an absolute cracker. Um, it's going to be the Archetype 101's video for the Knight cards, uh, which is very, very exciting for me and hopefully for you guys as well because I know you guys are big fans of the Knight cards in general. Um, but apart from that, I'll try and upload this onto the Wikipedia page as a document for you guys to download or read um, or just read online uh, because obviously it's going to be quite useful if you can just access it all the time. But yeah, like I said, if there's just a, if there's still rulings that you need to know or aren't sure on, uh, just leave a comment in the section down below if there's anything you think I've missed out and I can go ahead and edit the rule book. Um, but apart from that, please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, uh, get your hands on some Chaos Galaxy cards if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.